Not so long ago, we received a call from our friend and world-renowned ski photographer, Warren Miller. He told us about a young Canadian skier, Glenn Wirtel, who was going to set himself on fire and ski off a cliff. We thought that sounded like a thrill seeker. So we asked Warren to film the action. Miller's crew rendezvoused with Wirtel in Squaw Valley, California, the site of the 1960 Winter Olympics. Although only 22 years old, Glenn is certified to teach skiing in four countries. He is presently on the coaching staff of the Vancouver Ski Team. I actually started skiing when I was about five years old. I began racing at 11 years old and raced for several years. Then I turned to teaching skiing at 16. I moved out of instruction to coaching mainly because I had had racing experience myself. I felt that I'd enjoy coaching more because of the better grade of skiers and the more action, going to races, traveling. Glenn told us about coaching his races for the slalom course. Slalom involves more turning than in giant slalom or downhill. The turns are a little tighter, a little sharper. The racer has to use his knees more. Definitely ski in control and be very quick on and off the edges so as to gain more speed through the course. The reason that these ski pants might look a little different are that uh, the orange ribbing on them is used as knee protection for running slalom, sometimes used in giant slalom also. You find when you're driving at the slalom gate, you want to turn very quickly to set up for the next turn, be on and off your edges fast, and this often involves, if you're using your knees properly, hitting the gate with your knee. Now, if you're not wearing such padding as this, uh, it can often be kind of painful and throw you out of the course, throw you off your rhythm. Many skiers can look good on a hard-packed slope, but then they go to pieces when they run into a difficult situation. Glenn can ski it all. I, I like to ski at uh, good speed. I get a thrill or a sensation out of skiing fast and I get a feeling of having done something, and also, a lot, it's an exciting thing to do. I enjoy doing it. Glenn spent a considerable amount of time searching for a suitable rock for his fire jump. In looking for a proper cliff, I generally take into account the takeoff, want a fairly flat takeoff with a steep inrun and a steep landing, mainly a steep landing because uh, this f makes it easier to get over your skis again once you've landed. If I landed on a perfectly flat surface, I'd probably just, I would hit with such a force that uh, it would just knock me off both skis and probably hurt myself. After finding a suitable cliff to jump off, we had to build a proper inrun with a good slope spend about half an hour building that jump there on the edge of it with a flat takeoff just so I could set up, I could have everything under control without being thrown or catch my ski on a rock which might throw me off balance. My clothing when I do this jump is comprised of uh, two or three sets of long johns, ski pants, an overall suit and a flame-proof suit used by racing car drivers. The uh, equipment, I use a face mask with a breathing hose that traps the air inside my suit, so I breathe the air locked in under the clothing. The reason I use a full face mask like this with breathing, breathing apparatus is that uh, if I breathe the air trapped under the mask, it would fog the lenses and I wouldn't be able to see the takeoff. The fuel we use to uh, set on fire is a mixture of half gasoline, half kerosene, and some white gas to add brightness to the flames. Uh, we've got a tank, a spray tank, that uh, a friend of mine, Bruce McGregor, uses to spray me and then hits me with a torch before I take off. At the base of the cliff, we have uh, three guys on fire extinguishers who, uh, as soon as I land, will ski over and put me out with these fire extinguishers. Although Glenn wore protective clothing, they would have had to smother the fire within seconds or he could sustain serious burns. Well, I hope that the flames won't be going over my face so I can see the take off properly. This is just about all I, I'm really worried about. It's just being able to hit the takeoff at the right moment, time my jump properly so I can hold my position until I land. 
The fire went out. My reaction to the first jump was one of uh, mainly disappointment because I didn't feel that I was covered in flames enough. I didn't feel that it came off properly. The jump was okay. The landing wasn't too bad. Um, I just didn't have enough fire on and I felt obliged to do it right. This time, twice as much gasoline was used. I'm not concerned about the uh, guys on the fire extinguishers. I'm sure they can get to me on time. They're on skis and they're capable. Uh, they'll be there, I'm sure, at the moment uh, when they're needed. man dropped his fire extinguisher. Uh, I was really concerned about the fire extinguisher. I was getting a little uptight at that time because I realized that I'd come to a full stop and I was still on flames. I knew that one of the guys had fallen and I just didn't think there was any extinguishers around or something had gone wrong. And somebody came across, hit me again with another extinguisher and put me out. Let's take another look at the jump, this time in slow motion. Tell, race coach, daredevil skier, thrill seeker.